In this example of how to find a cross product, I just came up with two vectors. We have the A vector and the B vector. They have three components, X, Y, and Z. And we're going to find the cross product of these two. And we know that the cross product of two vectors is equal to the unit vectors X, Y, and Z. The X, Y, and Z components of the first vector and the x, y, and z components of the second vector. So this would be b sub x, b sub y, b sub z, all put in a determinant and then finding the solution of that determinant. So that means if we put in the numbers, this is equal to x, y, and z, the three unit vectors, the x, y, and z components, of the first vector, 3, 2, and minus 5, and 2, minus 6, and 4, 2, minus 6, and 4. All right, so all we have to do now is simply solve that determinant. So this is equal to taking the first element, which is the unit vector in the x direction, and multiplying it times, if I cover up those elements in the upper row and those elements in the column that x belongs to, I'm left with these four numbers. I'm going to multiply this times this and subtract when I multiply this times this. So I get 2 times 4 minus negative 5 times a negative 6. Then I subtract minus the unit vector in the y direction times, again, I block out all of these elements and all of these elements, the ones that y belongs to, the row and the column that y belongs to, you mask out and you're left with these two numbers and those two numbers, so you multiply these two together and subtract when you multiply those two together. So you get 3 times 4 minus a minus 5 times 2. So it's 3 times 4 minus a minus 5 times 2. And then plus, we take the z unit vector, and we multiply times. Again, we block out all the elements in the row and all the elements in the column that z belongs to. We're left with these four numbers, and I multiply this times this, minus this times this. So it would be uh, 3 times a minus 6 minus a 2 times a 2, like so. And then we just have to simplify that. So this is equal to x times, that would be 8 minus 30 minus the y unit vector times 12 minus a minus 10, that becomes plus 10, plus the z unit vector times minus 18 minus 4. Combine that a little bit more, so this is equal to, and then reversing the order, so it's 8 minus 30, that's a minus 24 in the x direction. We have plus 22, but we have a minus here that would be minus 22 in the y direction, and here we have a minus 18, minus 4, that's minus 22, and minus 22 in the z direction. And so, now it's unit vector, like that, and so this is simply a cross b. Oh, yes, it's minus 22. That's a good, thank you, minus 22. Good catch. Now, what is the magnitude of that vector? Well, to find the magnitude, wow, this is interesting. I just picked those numbers out of random and look at minus 22x, minus 22y, minus 22z. That was not pre predetermined. All right, okay, now, what about the magnitude? So let's say that this is now the c vector. And I want to find the magnitude of the c vector. Well, that will simply be the square root of the sum of the squares of the individual components. So it would be minus 22 squared plus minus 22 squared plus minus 22 squared. So it would be, whew, what is that equal to? Let me see if I can find my calculator. And my calculator disappeared on me. I just found it. It's right here. So it's 22 squared times 3, because there's three of those. Take the square root, and I get, hmm, let me try it again, 22 squared times 3 equals, take the square root of that, and I get 38.1. So the magnitude of that vector is equal to 38.1. There we go. And that's how we find the cross product and the magnitude. 
Now, of course, we could have found the magnitude using this other method. We could have said, ah, the magnitude of the C vector is also equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. But then I would have had to calculate the magnitude of each of those separately and found the angle between them using the cross product method. Uh, not the cross product, but the dot product method. But I think it's easier to find the magnitude when you do it like this at the end. Anyway, there's a good example for how to find the cross product of two vectors that have an x, a y, and a z component each. And so a little bit of legwork, but not too difficult.